Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Bestec Knives Mothus with Bestex Barlock. This is the first, at least it's the first premium Bestec I've ever seen with a Barlock. Um, perhaps the first Bestec ever. Um, this is uh, designed by um, who I think is, is one of the best designers for uh, Bestec. And if he's worked with other people, I don't know. Um, but I, I'm going to butcher his name. It's Mr. Combo or Kambu. I'm so sorry about that. I have enjoyed many of his designs in the past, and I really feel like his designs kind of help out with the price tag because there's more going on, but there's also more work that's going into it. We're going to talk more about the price, though, for sure, um, but uh, it didn't surprise me at all. I didn't. I, it's not like I picked this up and was like, oh, I immediately know who designed it, but there was... Uh, there's just a little more zazz here. There's a little more personality, right? Some the, the, the type of stuff that people who are actually buying this, these knives, it's the type of stuff they appreciate it. So um, we're going to talk all about it. Thanks so much to Bestec for providing this knife for review. It should be available. I will link it right down in the description so you guys can check it out. If it's not available, then it will be available soon. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. We have some... Debris. Get out of here, you jerk. What's going on? Jeez. Okay. Uh, overall length uh, of the moth is coming in at eight inches. Blade length is three and a half and cutting edge is also three and a half inches. I know a lot of people are going to be happy with those measurements there. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, I would call this a full size knife. Eight inches is full size to me. You can define it however you want. How about up against the Demco 80 20.5? How about up against the um, Spyderco Para 3 and the Spyderco PM2? Once again, kind of in between, closer to the size of the PM2. And then finally up against the Benchmade Bugout. There we go. And um, the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Alrighty. So, how is the action on this knife? The action is beautiful. It's very, very smooth. The tension on this bar lock is insane. I don't know if they have the Omega. I think the Omega spring itself is thick and they also have it mounted very close to it. Like the bend is it's, it's very close in here because the tension, this has, it's, this is the most tension I have ever felt on a bar lock. And it feels good. It's not so much that I can't pull it back. I obviously can, right? But that thing is really up there behind the um, the knife and it doesn't move. A lot of times these axis style locks, right? And for people, there's always like one person who's like, they copied the axis lock. The patent's up. It's been up for a long time. That's why you're seeing these things all over the place. There's <laughs> <laughs> Every any company can. I mean that that's that's why we've got it on the Hogue, right? Long time ago. We see varying levels of tension, this or that. It's still an Omega spring. There's still a chance it can break. I wish that they would have included extras. And I dug through this pouch, and they didn't send me extras. Maybe it's because I got a pre-production variant. I don't know. If they don't provide extras, best egg, I think you should be providing extra Omega Springs. In fact, anybody who is offering a knife with a bar lock that utilizes Omega Springs, you should be offering extras, right? Uh, I like the way that um, I'm not, you know, I hate to bring up another brand in the middle of it, but somebody who does it really well is Kunwu. They offer different sizes, different thicknesses of Omega Spring, um, and then they offer multiple Right, So you can kind of get it the way you want, and if one breaks, you can switch it out for another one. Now, even if that does happen, right, you, I, I mean, you know, to people saying, oh, it's a deal breaker if it's Omega Springs, you can get them pretty cheap, and you can size them pretty easily. It's really not that big of a deal. If one breaks, you can buy another set pretty easily. But as far as these go, wow, the tension is up there, and it is very solid, and the lockout position doesn't move. A lot of these other companies that are using them, it's less tension which I guess you could make an argument for is maybe a little bit easier for some people's fingers, but the bar is wobbly in the open position, which has, uh, if I'm being honest, has always bothered me a little bit, even if I feel like the lockup is plenty solid. This has plenty solid lockup. The tension is insane on that bar lock while not being so hard 
to disengage that it turns me off from the knife. And the action itself, right, which I think maybe we can see in there, it does run on bearings. But the action itself is very, very nice. It actually, it looks like it's on washers, but it's on bearings. Really nice. And normally, I, I've been saying this a lot lately, I, I've been surprised by many of these little thumb discs. I used to hate them because it always seemed like they were in the wrong place and it just wasn't convenient to open it, right? They're always presented as, you know, a means of opening a knife that is more tactical than other means. I don't know why. But it, to me, it, for a long time, it was just an inconvenience. It was just a weird thing that I used to open the knife. Um, it's kind of like a Reese's peanut butter cup that's attached to your knife. And the texturing is subtle. It looks nice, right? It almost looks like a crown or a little hat. <laughs> but but it's in the right place, right? And it's actually really... Why? He's like, he says it's easy and he can't even do it. It's actually really easy to deploy the knife, whether you are doing the... <laughs> Why I'm able to do it the whole video and then as soon as I talk about how easy it is, right, I give a bunch of terrible examples. If you get your index finger in the way while you're doing the reverse flick, it's going to stop it like this. So I guess I should correct myself and say it is easily done or more reliably done to open it with a thumb. If you're trying to reverse flick it, Right, unless you're really good at using your index finger, it's actually a little bit difficult to get it to come all the way out without running into your own index finger. But there's a lot holding this in the closed position. It's pretty heavy. So the amount of power that you build up behind the blade before it throws is plenty enough to get it to open up in to the opened position. After you fidget with it for a while, the tension on the lock bar or on the bar lock, you have to say those words the other way because otherwise it means a totally different thing. It is enough to wear your fingers out a bit, right? It's not enough of a workout that, you know, five or so deployments is going to wear you out. But if you sit here and do this 20 times in a row, yeah, the it's a good way to build up the muscles in your index finger and your thumb, I guess. But, um, yeah, there's quite a bit there. So, anyways, yeah, I, I really enjoy the action. It really feels solid and makes it feel like a high-quality piece. Um, but that might just be me. You know, do what you will with that information. Let's do carry profile. So the thickness of this thing, it's not super thick, but it is thicker than the pair of three. So something to note if that's something you care about. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and pair of three, you can see here, it's a little shorter than the PM2, a little longer than the pair of three, but nowhere near as tall as either. So truthfully, outside of the weight, it's going to be a pretty easy object to carry. Let's take a look at the inside of the knife real quick. Did this finally die? That, uh, that This flashlight lasted forever. Let's plug this thing. Uh, if you guys remember when I got this, come on now. This is the Olight i3T or something like that. It was like 30 bucks. It's been running on a single AAA for like a thousand uploads. That thing is awesome. <laughs> um, I, uh, I got another flashlight here. Um, the uh, Where is it? Yeah, my Citadel. Uh, which is a much more expensive light. It's the custom flashlight that we're going to use today. Let me get it off the red mode here. But you can see the inside. Wow, okay, we're real bright there. We do have some milling on the inside, um, which is nice. That's nice that they um, did that uh, for a little bit of weight reduction because it is, I think it's it's not super heavy, but it's fairly heavy. This is titanium. Um, the weight coming in at, not crazy, honestly, 4.09 ounces. I mean, really, the vast majority of people are not going to complain about that. And this is the exact same overall length as the Ritter Hogue, which is G10 and some nested steel cartridge liners. And this weighs half an ounce more. So I I don't think that that's that big of a deal. The the um, the ratios are not perfect. The balance is not perfect, right? You were balanced a little ways back from the pivot, but it's not crazy. Honestly, it feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and do... A hardware check. I'm going to get all my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. Sometimes I like to ham it up and yell a little bit, right? This is the part where you guys kind of space out and you're not really paying attention. Like, yeah, yeah, your tools are expensive and recommendable. We get it. But you can find them down in the uh, description or the pinned comment. This is a T8 pivot and Bestec is still making us deal with T6 screws. Not that big of a deal. There's just a few, right? You got the... Um, they, look at this. Lefties, they care about you. There's a spot. They even decorate it. I love this. The mounting position for the clip has a little skull face on it. Not an aggro skull clip that makes you roll your eyes, but just a little like, it's like a little Easter egg. It's a little detail that you don't notice till you look at, right? But the slot they mill for the, <laughs> for the pocket clip has the same thing. It's kind of, I kind of like that. I kind of think that's a nice little touch, right? But this is an ambidextrous lock. 
So the obvious thing to do is offer a clip mounting position for both right and left handed people, which they have done for you. Thank you. This is how it should be, right? You got some T6 screws. Honestly, the hardware is not going to be a problem. Anybody who has disassembled a bar lock knife will tell you it's not impossible, far from impossible, but it's a little bit more finicky than taking apart a regular frame lock or liner lock that's pillow or sandwich construction. Um, so have a place to put your hardware, have a magnet, have a disassembly mat. That's the way to do it. Um, and tape the blade because I can tell you I have cut myself more often holding things in place that are under tension. Um, you know, on like a bar lock knife, I've cut myself more often from not taping a blade while I'm disassembling it. So pro tip or not a just regular guy tip, regular person tip. Tape the blade, have a place to put your hardware, have a magnet, have a disassembly mat, and have the proper tools for disassembly, and you should be good to go. Um, let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness real quick. Blade stock thickness of the Mothus. I don't know why I think that's a cool name for a knife. Mothus. Rolls off the tongue. 130, and it says 134, about 135 thousandths. Am I on the flat? I think I was. Let's try it again and make sure that I'm actually on the flat. Yeah, it's 135 thousandths on the money, which in my experience is the exact median of the um, knife world, you know, in terms of like blade stock thickness. Okay, meat and potatoes time. A nice, if you were to erase all of the detail in this knife and just give the silhouette, it's a very classic silhouette. But it works. There's a slight area right here where you can sort of lay your index finger. Um, I think some of these edges could have been chamfered a bit more. They're not sharp, but you're going to notice like eh, it could have been a little bit more knocked down. Um, where it makes up for that, though, is um, general general ergonomic comfort. You have a flat milled clip. That's a nice detail. There's actually quite a bit of detail in the clip, which I really appreciate it. Where it makes up for that in general is just detail in general. Now, obviously, this what's going on here is not going to be for everybody, right? I, I get that, right? This is going to be a polarizing aesthetic. It's, I, I don't believe for a second that the designer was like, I'm going to make a design, right? Or I'm going to mill a pattern into the blade that everybody's going to be okay with. No, I think he did what he wanted to do, knowing that some people are going to like it and some people are not. But what I am going to step back and appreciate, because the truth is, is that all this stuff on the blade is not necessarily my taste. I do appreciate the work that went into it. This is actually milled in, right? So, these uh, polished areas, and this is polished, right? They're actually above these areas down here. And this is obviously done by machine, but it does cost more money to do this. Factually, it just does, right? Not a ton more, but a, a little bit more. And it, it makes a knife like this more interesting than an otherwise just plain area, right? If that's your thing, th listen, I'm about to make your day. If you like plain and minimalist, well, you're in the, you're in the right enthusiast world because the knife world has churned out a good job billion of those things in just the last two to three years. We have more plain Jane minimalist aesthetic designs than I could have ever possibly imagined. It is insane. In fact, there are so many, if you can believe it, I have become bored with them because it is, it seems like almost everything is minimalist, tactical minimalist, right? It's just, it just means there's nothing on it, right? That's okay. If you like that, that's fine. But I want to appreciate this. This is cool, right? There's a lot going on and it's done really well. They've got this line that follows right here. This area has a couple of different lines. This entire, this whole design, the little pattern in here is contained within two milling lines that sort of tapers off towards the back end of the knife. They've got the little skull thing back here and all of that, they still managed to make it pretty ergonomic. There's no part of the knife that looks boring. I mean, you could say the blade is the most boring part, but I kind of like that they went from this and then into, you know, I still like a like a modern cool drop point blade, but just kind of like a planer aesthetic. I like it. I think it's neat. I like the little Reese's cup, um, you know, flipper disc thing, whatever we tactical frisbee, right? Whatever we call this, right? If Emerson fans are really gonna get on me for that. How dare you? <laughs> it's not a frisbee. It's not a frisbee. It helps out when you're fighting off the ninjas behind the supermarket because you can deploy it faster. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I like this. I, I think it's neat. Um, and it, it's nice that this is polished. It depends on which version you get. Obviously, I'm just wiping my fingerprints off. This is the blue and silver one, but they have different 
like if they got a plain black one, they've got a bronze one, right? It's nice that they offer this contrast. I, I think it's really cool. And they did it on both sides, right? So if you're, you know, somebody who's bothered by them doing a pattern or texture on one side and not on the other, well, this knife's got it, right? It's great. Um, this has Best X typical incredible fit and finish. Bestec has definitely become one of the better Chinese OEMs when it comes to manufacturing quality. <laughs> There's a premium on this for sure. They they know it too because they're charging a lot more money than they used to, right? But, you know, let's be fair about this. Bestec has, has become one of the greats and it absolutely shines here. This was executed flawlessly. Fit and finish on this knife is perfect and it feels solid. It does not feel lazy, floppy, right? It's clicky in all the right places and the lockup is absolute. The blade, the satin finish, which is not my favorite finish, right? But credit where it's due, is beautiful. Bestec does one of the best production satin finishes ever. They just do a really, really good job. Drop point blade, a little bit of styling in here, nice long swedge. It does come down to a reasonably thin edge and it's been sharpened very, very well. Obviously, Master Ultra Ninja level 9000 sharpeners can get it sharper, right? Or just people with a guided system that you can buy anywhere. But the factory edge on this is good. The tip, definitely pointy, definitely sharp, right? Doesn't taper out to the thinnest tip ever, but it will do the job. This is a nice generic EDC blade profile. Um, the, uh, the thumb disc is ever so slightly in the cutting path, but not bad, right? There's not much stopping you from accidentally sliding up on the initial part of the sharpened edge other than a little teeny tiny, it's just sort of a gap right here, right? That's the only indicator you're going to have. So be careful about that. Otherwise it's good to go. Edges up here, a little bit sharp. You can see, right? Enough to shave fingernails. So ferro rod fans, there you go. People who don't like that, it's a little bit sharp, right? Uh, on one side, it says um, Bestec, sorry, it's really Bestec knives, very tiny, which I actually appreciate it. Uh, Kombu's um, uh, Insignia and then M390, um, which is fine. I think this is good, you know, uh, geometry for M390. There's nothing wrong with M390. We just see it on everything, right? It's Bestec's go-to for their premium stuff. Um, I would... I'd really like to see, especially at this at this price, I'd love to see Bestex mess around with S90V, which is the route that a lot of companies are taking. Um, that definitely does it a little bit for me. I kind of prefer S90V over M390, considering the overall balance. Um, but this is fine. M390 is certainly a premium knife. It's it's one of the most preferred compositions in premium production knife territory, so that's fine. Um, moving on here. Um, everything just looks really good. Um, we have the housing for the lock on the inside here. You can see it sort of nested on the inside there. And the rest of it down here is titanium and there's no reason to extend it further than that. The backspacer is pretty simple. They've milled a groove down the center and it looks good. That will highlight when the blade is off center, but it is not. It is dead centered, which is, it's always, it's always a flex from a company when they create a backspacer or something down here that like comes to a V or a U shape. Because it's like they're they're showcasing exactly how perfect their centering is. It's risky when you do that, right? It's kind of like on watches when at the top they put a line down the middle of the marker, which really, really showcases when the marker is not aligned properly, right? The noon marker or the 12 marker. I'm not a watch guy, so sorry if I'm not using the right terms. But it really highlights it. When they don't put it there, it's like, yeah, if it is off, it's a little harder to see. Best deck with this back or combo with this backspacer is really like, yeah, look at that. It is freaking centered, right? So, I mean, that's cool, right? If it does come off center, you're going to notice it, but usually you can adjust it for yourself. This one came perfectly centered. Like I said, ambi clip, that's great. Full titanium backspacer, full milled titanium pocket clip, which is also a bonus, right? The clip is good, nice retention, a little bit of a ramp there. You might have to squish it into some pocket seam thicknesses, but for the most part, you're going to be good to go. Um, these little uh, nubs here stick out not super far, but a little bit past the frame. It's not too bad, right? Looking at it from this angle, right, it's, it's more noticeable on one side. Not really that big of a deal. Some people might notice it, but they're not sharp. They're actually nicely knocked down. I'll give you a nice look there. Pretty good. Honestly, it all looks really, really great. There's a little bit of shouldering. The tang of the blade wraps around a stop pin in the traditional stop pin location. The lockup is absolute. It is absolutely solid. I'll go ahead and 
do the thing that I, I actually really hate this test, right? But I'll go ahead and do it. Yeah. I'm putting a pretty good dent into the back of that block. This is totally fine, right? It's not, in fact, there's no movement. There's no, not even any stick off of it. Uh, they've got this down. No movement whatsoever. No lock stick. That's really great. No pivot lash. Consistent in here, especially when the axis lock is pulled down, right? You can see that we're essentially swinging here, which is what you want to see. And then, oh, because of that tension there and the rounding, and how the axis bar or the, the, the bar lock interacts with the rounded tang of the blade back here. Lots of, man, it's real snappy in there. That's just feels really good. This is a nice knife. Really cool. Obviously, the aesthetic is going to turn some people off, right? But value is not universally based on any individual's perspective on the aesthetic, right? I want to judge the work that went into this knife. These knives are made in China, right? Labor costs are way lower there. Way lower. However, we do have premium materials. We'll start with that. That's the foundation. That's not the end that's not the end all be all. That's just the foundation, right? How are these materials? Uh, what's the, the final, you know, culmination of the materials? Lots of intricate milling, right? Really cool patterning. Um, really cool little teeny tiny details, just like the shape of this, right? The milled clip, extra details in the clip, right? A little fuller in the backspacer. The fact that the backspacer is full titanium. Right. We got a bar lock here, which means a little bit more internal milling to accommodate for the housing, the bar lock and everything. Just more that went into this. So how much is it? All right. Quit beating around the bush, complex. 297 bucks. Whew. There is a little more here than what I normally see from Bex. Uh, Bex. I'm still saying it wrong. Best X. Normal stuff, right? And the price of everything has gone up. Truthfully, I was kind of hoping to see this thing come in at 260 to 265. It's a bit higher. Uh, it's like I often say, right? If you really like how this looks and you're intrigued by it, then you probably, you know, you might have to grit your teeth a little bit, but I think you're going to be happy with this. Now, competitively, if we're going to reduce it to, you know, let's say you're like, I'm not really sold on the aesthetic. Right, but you have me intrigued on the build quality, right, and the fact that they put the effort into it. How does it stack up against other uh, options on the market, other competitive options? There's definitely people doing similar stuff for quite a bit less, right? I mean, we got we got companies in some cases doing it for almost a hundred bucks less, right? Um, and some people are gonna say, oh, "I find stuff on Amazon that's for you know one seventy. I've seen that stuff too. A lot of that stuff I'm not really sold on yet because we haven't seen we haven't seen a lot of tests done on how they're heat treating their stuff. I think Best Deck does the typical 59 to 61 uh, on M390, which 60 is, you know, okay. And 61 is, hey, that's pretty good. 59 is, nah, it's a little bit low, right? But as we have definitely seen in the past, uh, there are companies who, you know, yeah, they might sell titanium and M390 on Amazon for 165 or less, right? But we've seen this a lot. Sometimes that stuff comes back as being heat treated at like 56, in which case you got taken for a ride. No matter what you tell yourself, if you're, if you're wielding an M390 blade, at 56 Rockwell, it doesn't matter if you paid a hundred bucks for it, that thing is poo-poo town supreme, right? So, uh, it's always better to buy from people who are going to openly, you know, say, here's where we're, we're, we're hardening it to, right? I mean, you know, you're not gonna, you don't want to pay for a Hellcat with a Honda motor in it, right? No offense, Honda fans, but I ain't, I ain't buying no Hellcat with a Honda motor in it. I'm just not doing it. But cars still go, cars still drive. Yeah, but car doesn't drive the way it's supposed to, right? That's not, you know. So, um, yeah, there are very competitive options. And some of these companies really are, to bring up Kunwu again, they really are heat treating this stuff like mega crazy. Like they're really hitting those numbers, right? Which isn't ideal all the time. You get it too high and it gets brittle. You lose toughness, which is, uh, an, I would say it's the most most overlooked element of uh, knife steel composition. People are just like, get it as high as possible, max out the edge retention. That's all that's important, right? No, 
It's a balancing act for sure. A multi-directional teeter-totter, right? <laughs> you got to have people, you got to have it balanced the way that it's supposed to be balanced for the application it was intended for. So final conclusion, I think the design is awesome. They put a ton of work into it. Uh, Mr. Kambu, uh, again, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, has delivered again with uh, you know a design that's got a lot of work, a lot of character in it. Um, just a lot of cool elements, right? It's just, there's just more here than your average premium Chinese pocket knife, right? It's just, it's, it just looks neat. I really like the tension on the axis lock, um, or the, uh, the bar lock, right? 297 bucks is a bit much. Not something I'm going to say people need to rush out and buy right now. Um, if the price was substantially less, I might say, yeah, go out and get yourself one, right? But the truth is we have American offerings that are, you know, very similar, um, not, not often in titanium, right? But we got American, like premium American stuff that is uh, right around the same price, right? So this doesn't absolutely blow me away. I would prefer to see it a lot lower. There are definitely more competitive things on the market, but this is a very, very impressive knife. And the people who do grit their teeth through that price tag, I think will probably be happy with it. That's it. That's all I've got to say. Cool stuff. Where did my card go? Why is it gone? Why do I lose things so easily? Oh my God. All right. We're going to use the metal one today because the leather one is taking a day off. Thanks again to Best Deck for sending this in for me to take a look at. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.